Hey everyone, I thought I'd show off what are in my opinion the most anticipated strategy games that are set to come out roughly in the next 6 months. These are the games I've had an interest in but haven't got my hands on yet, so instead I wanted to introduce these games to you and see what you think. Pretty much all the footage I'll be showing is gameplay and as some of these games aren't out yet, the chances are that it's early footage you're looking at. Check the description if you want to find some great channels that do deeper dives on each game. I plan to do the same when I get access or when the games come out. Alright, so the first up technically isn't 2018, but it's one I didn't want to miss out on, and that is Spellforce 3. Spellforce 3 is an RTS RPG hybrid set in a fantasy world with multiple playable races that offer differing playstyles. It's mainly a traditional RTS that will see you managing several resources like food, wood, coal, etc. that will allow you to create buildings which allow you to field more units. Buildings can be assigned workers to increase efficiency, and the map is split up into sectors, with each sector having different resources and hostile mobs to take out. The units you field range from standard melee infantry and missile troops, but where the RPG elements shine is with the hero characters. Heroes have different focuses and have their own skill trees, and as the game progresses you'll end up fielding magical wizards and powerful warriors, and upgrade them as you would in an RPG to utilize special skills and abilities. Next up is Railway Empire. Railway Empire is set in 19th century Western America and tasks you with connecting up cities on a sort of campaign map, real map hybrid. The game seems fairly forgiving in the beginning but quickly becomes a mess of spaghetti railways everywhere when you have to deal with mountain passes, tunnels and obscure terrain. There are 40 historically accurate trains or locomotives in the game that can behave differently on the tracks, so again, people transport and industry transport has to be thought about and handled differently so you can make sure your lines are bringing in the money. Most of the time you'll spend from a bird's eye view of the game, but you can zoom all the way down and in to get a great look at the trains and towns themselves which seem really beautifully detailed. The game has a campaign with 7 big scenarios, but for me this is the kind of game where much like a city builder, you can just chill out and take it at your own pace and figure out the best routes to make, a real simulator type game. There's also a personnel system where different personnel won't get along with each other and you have to find efficient combos for people to make the most effective team and you can get historical mentors and tech trees that help your efficiency out over time. And one small awesome feature is that there's even the chance of Wild West style bandits attacking and robbing your trains. Originally slated for a 2017 release, Age of Empires Definitive Edition has now been pushed to Q1 of 2018, but you can play it if you pre-order before anyone else while they gather feedback to address some issues for balance and performance. There really isn't too much to say on this other than it looks fantastic. It's a proper overhaul of the game's art style, not just a slight up -res. I'm extremely excited to try out the Romans and Greeks and see how it all plays as I've never played the original game, instead just playing Age of Empires 2 and 3. The only drawback is that it's a Windows Store exclusive for now, so there's no Steam integration or support, so we'll have to see how the servers and multiplayer hold up. Next is Rise of Industry. Scheduled to enter early access in Q1 of 2018, Rise of Industry is a transport tycoon factorio sort of hybrid, whereby you have to build industry on resources, connect them up with roads, and trade with yourself essentially to generate income. So for instance you'll build a farm that specialises in animals. You'll tell it to produce cows, which in turn produce milk, leather and meat. You can then redirect the milk to another factory and combine it with wheat from a different farm to make dough and bread, and then sell the bread back at markets. So essentially it's a supply and demand game where you have to build up and manage your different buildings monetary and supply demands while supplying towns with refined products so that they can grow and survive, in turn giving you money. There's also pollution, sewerage and energy to worry about so it gets complicated pretty fast. Keeping things closer together will lower transport costs and you can eventually build railways and roads to better supply your towns to reduce the costs. Its art style has a really nice and simplistic isometric look with a super neat UI. And like Railway Empire, I look forward to just making a thriving little industry and figuring out efficient routes to essentially let the game just play itself. Next up is the only game without gameplay in this video and that is the Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia. We don't know too much about this game other than it'll likely arrive in late Q1 of 2018, possibly early Q2. Thrones is a smaller Total War title focused on Alfred the Great in 878 AD and its codebase is derived from Total War Attila. So chances are the game will look pretty similar to Attila, with hopefully some performance improvements and strong vibrant art style that sets it apart from its ancestor. The game's campaign map will focus solely on the British Isles and Ireland, and there will be 10 playable factions including British and Gaelic Kingdoms and Viking Settlers. Next up we have Battletech. Announced that ParadoxCon 2017 Battletech is set for an early 2018 release. 
Originally based on an old board game franchise, it's a turn-based mech combat game where you'll manage individual mechs, their maintenance, their payloads and their crew, and fight enemy mechs using the terrain to your advantage as best as possible. It has an RNG type battle system similar on the surface akin to something like an XCOM game, with multiple variations of mechs and weapon types that create a sort of rock paper scissors gameplay. It looks pretty cool, with deep line of sight and cover mechanics and individual collision detection for different parts of the mechs that you hit. You can disable certain weapons or break their legs or their jetpacks so it seems like it creates a really diverse amount of gameplay and allows for deep tactics in battle. The action point turn based nature allows for smart positioning and flanks to occur giving you that awesome risk reward where you end up relying on a 50% chance of a shot working in your favour. Definitely one to watch out for. Entering early access in 2018 is my favourite on this list, They Are Billions. They Are Billions is a steampunk base defence strategy game. You start with a handful of people and have to build defences to stave off waves of zombies. The waves of zombies get progressively larger and harder to deal with until they literally take up your whole screen with thousands of entities heaving against your walls en masse. You'll need to use the terrain to choose where to build walls and defences to funnel zombies in with fallback lines and traps for when things start to go really wrong. So essentially it's a tower defense game with an RTS economy with wood, gold, steel and more on top of it. You also have different mayors in the game to choose from that give you different effects and buffs throughout your survival and as the game has a steampunk setting you erect tesla towers and all sorts of weird technology to deal with the horde. Scheduled for Q2 of 2018 we have Ancestors Legacy. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on this game so if you want to see a more in-depth discussion on it check out my video. Ancestors Legacy is a squad based viking themed RTS with a unique spin on its combat and economy. Squads have unique formations and abilities that suit the era such as raising shields and defensive squares and they also have facing directions and morale meaning you can flank and overpower enemies to shatter them killing them more effectively. The base building and economy is really simplified focusing instead primarily on the army however there is a supply chain system whereby resources feed into a camp's main building as a hub. You can do raids on the smaller resources or attack the hubs directly to seize control of the resources, which allow you to field more units in a sort of snowball effect. The game has a scenario based campaign, it also has up close cinematic camera for when you want to zoom into the battles, and it's also going to feature multiplayer on release. Coming soon for 2018 is The Universe Sim. The Universe Sim is a modern take on the god game genre. You'll start by creating a civilization and managing them for a short while, battling the environment so you can eventually develop cities and take over the whole planet. Once you've done that, then you'll progress to the space age and begin multi-planetary colonization and eventually encounter aliens and have interplanetary wars. I haven't been able to find too much gameplay footage for the latter, but for the former, the civilization building is out on several YouTube channels and seems to be pretty dynamic with natural disasters wreaking havoc as you protect your little civilization in its infancy. You'll be researching technologies such as fire, farming, stonework and managing your planet's populations and the planet's food so that your sieve has enough to grow. It's got a pretty unique art style with fully rotatable planets with simulated temperatures and day and night cycles in different parts of the planet. I'm not sure how this kind of micromanaging scales up to the multiple planets, but I look forward to finding out. Next up we have Frostpunk. Scheduled for TBA 2018, my guess is that we've seen enough footage for it that it can't be too far off. Frostpunk is a survival city builder set in a sort of post-apocalyptic world where there's an ongoing ice age. The civilization develops steam powered technology to battle the cold. You'll start the game with a generator for heat and will have to manage and collect wood, iron and raw food to survive. These resources can then be refined and your populations can venture out into the frozen wastes to gather them. You'll have to enable laws and decide whether or not to use child labour, how and who should be hospitalised, food rations and deal with personal dilemmas. It's always a dire situation and each decision, whether it be a law or a dilemma, will probably mean someone is going to die. Bodies then need to be disposed of and sickness can spread so it's a really dark game about managing a civilization in the worst conditions. Winter storms roll around every now and then, dropping the temperature further so you'll need to build up rations and energy to keep people safe and warm during the worst conditions. You can also send people on expeditions for a chance of them returning with some lost goods to crash sites and areas of interest. Last game on this list doesn't have any full gameplay just yet, but it has a gameplay trailer and is probably a late 2018 game, but I wanted to show it off anyway, and that's Iron Harvest. Iron Harvest is an alternate history post-World War I game where mankind focused more on the mechanized aspects of the war with experimental tanks and bipedal machines for warfare. 
There isn't really too much else to talk about here, it has a very Company of Heroes vibe to it, with dynamic cover and destructible terrain, but with alternate history units, so I'm pretty hyped to cover the game in the future. Alright, so that's it for the most anticipated games coming in the first few months of 2018. These are the games I hope to cover on my channel with reviews and previews. If there's some you're particularly excited for, let me know in the comments and I'll try to make them a priority. Personally, Frostpunk and They Are Billions have me the most excited, so you can pretty much guarantee I'll be looking to do videos for them. Let me know if you feel there's anything I missed, and for the latest updates regarding these games, hit that fat subscribe button to make my day. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.